What do you do if you want a super baller single action only gun but need a shorter trigger reach? Meet the Armazika AZ P1 Super Optics 2. I'm David and this is the Armazika AZ P1 Super Optics 2, which is a ridiculously long name, will just be the Super Optics 2. So I do have a dad joke for you guys today. Next time you get a haircut and somebody comes up to you and says, hey, did you get a haircut? I want you to look at them, look them straight in the eye and look legitimately confused and say, I didn't get a haircut, I got all of them cut but you gotta keep the serious bit up until they visibly cringe. That's the most important part. I know you can do this. Guys, 2024 is the year that we have to dad harder than we ever had, so I need you to show up and be the best dad that you can. So the Super Optics 2 is an IPSC gun. That stands for International Practical Shooting Confederation, and what that means is that it's bound by the rules that determine what form a gun should take. This gun would be a standard gun or uh, standard optics if it ever got passed by IPSC. In the United States, we shoot USPSA, so this would be like a limited optics gun. Quality is super premium and the price absolutely reflects it. Think along the lines of like a DWX, but even higher end. And how it's like a DWX is it kind of looks like a CZ Tactical Sports had a grandparent that was a 2011. And rather than being slide in frame, it is slide on frame rather than the sliding trigger straight to the rear. It has the hinge trigger similar to a CZ Tactical Sports. But unlike CZs, which grips are a little bit small for people with kind of big hands, this has the broader grip tang similar to something like a Tanfolio. And it has high safeties very much like a 2011 style gun providing a great pocket for you to build your support grip. And guys, when you shoot a single action only gun, your thumb stays on the safety. This is not open for discussion. If you put it on the side, you're prone to creating malfunctions as the gun recoils, bumping the safety on. There is a right way to shoot a single action only gun and it's with your thumb on the safety. While this is a mega expensive gun, I don't get to keep it. This is on loan from the people over at American Precision Firearms, so I'll be sending it back to them once this video is done. And I'm sad about that because it's honestly a really nice shooting gun. But while the quality and craftsmanship of this gun are really, really high, because they are, that's not really what I want to talk about because what really sets this gun apart in my mind is the design. So I'll talk about some of the design stuff that's going on with the pistol that makes it a really awesome competition gun. Fire up that neck beard and get comfortable because we are going there. So first and foremost, the gun has an aluminum frame and weighs about 40 ounces. If you follow the channel, you know that I think about a 40 ounce non-compensated gun is about the right weight for a non-compensated 9mm, and so it definitely checks that box. The balance of the gun, balance is becoming more and more important in gun design. Back in the day with like the SP01 and stuff like that, we had these really muzzle heavy guns that kind of droop down to the front. The problem with that is it's just not as good a shooting experience as something that's really well balanced. And this gun is super well balanced. If I take my hand off the gun, you can see it doesn't droop down. As discussed, the beaver tail is kind of well sculpted, kind of fat, more like a tan folio, which is nice. The CZ beaver tails are just a little bit too thin for my hands. And this sculpt of the beaver tail makes the gun stay planted. And then there is the texture on the back strap and front strap of the gun, which is these knobby little square type jobs that absolutely plant the gun in your hand and don't allow it to move. While the gun is a wide body, meaning it will take 2011 mags if you shorten up the grip screws, the trigger reach on the gun is absolutely absurd. You can see how much of my finger I can sink onto the trigger. It is very nice and I feel like I have very good control of the gun. And the trigger face of this trigger is something I haven't seen before. Now, most triggers have like a serrated face or something like that. This actually has a cutout in the middle of the trigger. And what that means is when you put your booger hook onto the bang switch, as it were, the flesh of your finger kind of bites into that groove and you have a very, very good control of the gun. It really does help promote a straight to the rear trigger pull, which kind of aids the bonkers accuracy I was seeing out of the gun. Another interesting thing is that the gun has a firing pin block, but despite having a firing pin block, the trigger pull is only two pounds. It's a very crisp, very short take up to a wall and it's just before 90 degrees, you pull through and it drops the hammer at about 90 degrees, and then the reset is mega short like you would expect and want. So it is a very, very shootable trigger. Where the gun sort of starts to come into its own is the design of the grip. Now you can kind of see there's these two chamfers on the backside of the gun. So when you grip the gun, it doesn't feel like a brick like a 2011 grip tends to feel like. It provides this one little spot right here. So when I bring my support hand onto the side of the gun, my support hand is actually getting behind the gun and helping absorb recoil so it's very easy to transfer 
the force of the gun recoiling into my support hand. So that is a very nice feature, makes the gun very controllable. The other reason the gun doesn't feel like a brick is because the grip panels actually have a chamfer at the front of it and the cut under the trigger guard starts way on the side of the gun. So it really sinks the gun deep into your grip. So I feel like I can get more of my grip pressure from where how my hand is situated on the gun. It feels really good. The grip panels provide almost no traction. In fact, like zero traction. They're aluminum grip panels that form the magwell, which is an IPSC standard type of magwell, which isn't the best for USPSA. We'll revisit that in a bit. Keeping on the theme of intelligent design, there is the mag catch. Now the mag catch has like a 45 degree chamfer because when you're coming down onto the mag catch, you're coming down kind of straight onto it. And the 45 degree catch actually transmits that force into pushing the the button through the gun. So it has a very, very usable mag catch, which is nice because if you think about like a wide body 2011, those have a difficult time with their mag buttons. Usually if you get the bigger, you know, enlarged buttons for it, you're it, the risk of dropping magazines as the gun recoils in your hand or potentially on table starts. This is just a very, very well-designed gun, kind of like the mag button on some of the infinities. One thing that's interesting is it has a slide stop that is ambidextrous and right in front of the safeties. You can drop the slide with your thumb on the safety if you are so inclined, or you can use your trigger finger to drop the slide, which is pretty cool. The takedown on the gun is really intelligent if you are at you know bigger matches and stuff like that and you need to wipe out your rails or something like that you just have this little half moon cut out on the slide you just pull it slightly to the rear and you push through on that and pull the button and then it stays captured in the frame like that and you see the super high polished you know single two rails on either side the slide is pretty impressive we'll get there but i want to talk more about the frame still you can see these two channels on either side of the frame that act as thumb rest. So if you're somebody who likes to engage their, you know, support hand thumb on the gripping process, then you have that option available to you. Coming up to the slide, the slide has very usable serrations at the front of the gun. The channel that accepts the steel guide rod is a little bit long. They could probably trim some weight off the slide by shortening that up a bit, and that would probably improve how it shoots even more. But what is important is that they have absolutely hollowed out the back of the slide to offset the weight of the optic. There is huge weight relief at the back of the gun, which makes the gun feel more balanced when it's shooting. The optics cut doesn't necessarily sink the optic down low, and the optic is as low as it can responsibly be based on where the firing pin channel is sort of located. This gun would really benefit from a low deck height optic like an RMSX or something like that. You guys, if you haven't shot a low deck height optic, all you know is the Trigicon SRO, you don't really have a frame of reference, but getting the window of the optic closer to the top of the slide is a much more enjoyable experience. I can't wait for people to release new optics that sink the optic lens down. I was able to convince American Precision Firearms to send me an extra magazine, bringing the count up to three so that I could compete in a match, and I did that this past weekend. The gun performed really well. I was actually surprised on some of the more difficult shots, how close together my shots were. The gun was very controllable. I wish that I could make the gun look better because I was more used to how the gun shot, but even still, I had a pretty good match. Shooting on the square range, the gun performed great. In the cold match that I shot, it was in the mid 30s, which uh, was not super fun, but I overstuffed a magazine because the magazines are only 20 rounds, but if you he-man it, you can get some extra rounds in. I did that and I had the slide locked back on basically a full magazine, so that's actually my bad. Black Scorpion gear is making holsters for this, so there is some third-party support that is already starting to show up for these guns. One thing that is actually interesting about these guns is that if you put the manual safety on, rather than like a 2011 style gun where the trigger basically doesn't go all the way to the rear, this actually allows the trigger to go through its full travel range, but it disconnects the trigger from the hammer, which is kind of neat. As far as negatives are concerned, the, the negatives are pretty standard for when you take a European gun and you bring it to the US and want to use it for sport because it's designed around the European version of the game and not the US version. The magazine well, as discussed, is a little bit small. It is functional. However, if you look, they make open guns, so they do have bigger mag wells that you can put on there. So there are different grip panels and mag wells available that would make the gun feel more like a true, you know, US PSA limited optics gun. More traction on the side of the gun would be welcome. I mean, there is almost zero traction on the side of the gun. It doesn't quite matter so much because you're able to get behind the gun, as I mentioned. So you're accepting the pressure of recoil through being behind the gun and not trying to use traction to transfer that force into your support hand. The magazines are 20 rounders and they have lockback followers. It'd be good to see true 141 millimeter magazines with 
non-lockback followers and get that mag capacity up to you know 23 24 rounds despite the awesome balance of the gun if they took a little bit more out of the recoil spring guide and maybe trim the front of the gun gave the front of the slide a little bit more of a chamfer so that you know had a nice like almost like a browning high power type cut that'd be pretty cool but as it is right now it's still pretty amazing now the other one is the price we talked about the price being high it's about forty two hundred dollars so it is a super premium firearm but if you want a really intelligently designed pistol with a short trigger reach then i mean it is a really awesome choice so another gun in that price point is the voodoo gunworks priest which you can watch this video on now